Hi guys, this is a quick follow-up to my Harman video. When I was in Germany in May and June, I was in contact with some people who are in touch with Professor Emeritus Dr. Jürgen Orsing, a scholar of Egyptology at the University of Berlin and a renowned expert in the field. They kindly provided me with the original correspondence he had regarding the naming conventions surrounding the Haman in the Quran, and Professor Orsing agreed that they could be used to clarify the situation I already mentioned based on his open letter from August 2009. As we have seen in the last few days, Muslim miracle seekers are currently being hit hard by being confronted with reality as well as the truth and are caught out when using their dishonest tricks and tactics. One such tactic I demonstrated in my Haman video where I showed that sites such as Islamic Awareness Org simply use the name of a renowned scholar, misquote him and when he protests and corrects them simply ignore this. Well, just to show that I'm not making anything up or inventing things, here are some examples of where Professor Orsing is mentioned, be it in his university, at conferences, at events, and where he is cited or a member of. Islamic Awareness is trying to follow the path laid out by Bouquet and has had to change their document over time as more and more facts emerge. We can see this miraculous evolution over time in the different versions, where today they're actually leaving it as an open question. One simply has to wonder when the next step occurs and renders the page extinct. A reason for this could be that more and more people object to being wrongly cited. One of these is Professor Orsing. Islamic Awareness writes, there are early examples, in plural form, of a merger between the H and the H from the New Kingdom period, mentioned by Jürgen Orsing. They cite his book, the Nominalbildung der Ram, as proof, making it look as though this is what Professor Orsing wrote. While it seems that German professors are more interested in intellectual honesty and have more integrity than French gastroenterologists or Canadian anatomists, fortunately for us, and all truth-loving individuals. But in all fairness, I need to acknowledge that if Moore were to retract his statements and admit the truth today, he and his family would not exactly have a happy life. But then others did not get themselves in such a mess. In his recent YouTube video, Professor Kröner clarified his statements regarding geology and the Quran when he found he was misquoted in the old video Western Scientists Attest to the Quran. Well, now Professor Orsing has consented for his original correspondence in addition to his open letter to be publicized to show what he really said and what he thinks of the way Islamic Awareness is abusing his name and reputation. In his open letter, my translation of which you can find in the description box, he calls the approach of Islamic awareness self-righteous, as Ranke and as do other Egyptologists consider the hyphen H to be part of the name and not something that can simply be dropped. What Islamic awareness is aware of, pardon the pun, is that there are several problems with the name and its vocalization of the Egyptian inscriptions and the Quranic texts. So, on top of suggesting that the last part of the name is superfluous, they also claim that the two types of H do not present a problem, as Professor Orsing has said so, to try and make the name Haman of the Quran a match with the Egyptian hieroglyphs. Rebutting Islamic awareness, Professor Orsing is adamant that the alleged merging of the two types of H for the case of Haman has never been postulated by him and that he is only aware of one single example where this merging has happened during this era and that he doubts that this is the case here. He also points out that this is a secondary vocalization, further moving it away from the possible interpretations by Muslim miracle seekers and putting it firmly into the realm of religious wishful thinking. This is a typical example of quote mining an expert for the benefit of improving the Quran. Professor Orsing then repeats his concerns regarding the morphology of the name as neither Hebrew nor Arabic present an etymological background for the name, while it does in Persian. Using plain facts and not wild speculation, he summarizes, there's a discrepancy in the vocalization of the first and last H. The two vowels are long in Arabic, the equivalent of which has not been found in Egyptian hieroglyphs. The profession, the Egyptian person, is described as a local foreman in a quarry of Amun. In addition, the usage of fire bricks was not used in Egypt at the time to construct large or tall buildings or monuments. 
My own conclusion is there is no reason whatsoever to assume that the Aman of the Quran has been identified using the doorpost in the museum in Vienna as evidence. Let's take a look at their second expert quote. Carsten Poist is not one of the top experts in the field and worked as an assistant in the institute. In his book Egyptian Phonology, um, he is quoted as saying, it is presently impossible to decide whether the primary distinction was one of voice or one of place of articulation. Now this would indeed mean that there could be a controversy surrounding the pronunciation of the ominous age. But what Islamic awareness has done is simply deliver a typical quote mine, as the section is about the Coptic era. Islamic awareness is off by roughly a thousand years. It would have been more honest to also refer to the beginning of the section and then show the conclusion on page 99, which is all about the merger of the two ages in Coptic. The book is available online so anyone can check the original. This shows that if one just accepts the apparently oh so rational explanations of Muslim apologetics, one does so at one's own peril. Every single time I check these absolute and monstrous claims, I find that they are based at best on what you find plenty of in the Arabian desert, sand. Better luck next time. Thanks for your time.